Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Badshai Mosque in Lahore. This is a beautiful place which I love for a few reasons. Firstly, it's a mosque and which Muslim wouldn't love a mosque? But also it was built in the 1600s, would you believe it? And it was built by a great powerful Muslim Indian leader called Aurang Aurangzeb. Now Aurangzeb is amazing for many, many reasons. One of the reasons he's amazing is because when other leaders, when they get power, they whine and dine and womanize even more. When he actually was a spiritual person, he was an anti-Darwinian person. He focused not on the material world, but on spirituality. Not only did he build the economy of India and build grand mosques like this, he also helped shape the identity of the Muslims in India. And such a great powerful leader, when he came to power, he still had this passion for the Quran and he actually memorized the Quran after he became the leader of India. And you know, we can go on and list a whole bunch of achievements that he actually did. However, I just want to highlight something about him. He was Mughal. He was a descendant of the Mongols. And remember, the Mongols were people who supposedly destroyed Islam. However, what we have to remember is that when Allah is in charge of this Ummah, then of course there's going to be times where there's going to be times of despair and destruction. But we should never despair because although what, what it looks like in, in certain times, it looks like you know Muslims are despairing and things are going really, really down. Overall, Allah is in charge. So we should always keep in mind that he has a grand plan. Now, when the Mughals came and the Mongols came and they destroyed Baghdad and they destroyed uh, the, you know, the hub of knowledge for the Muslim world, then they converted to Islam, although they were pagans before this, and they started expanding in the name of Islam and they did many achievements which the previous Muslims could not actually do. So yes, they came with destruction, but they also came with construction. So we should always keep that in mind. Now, one last thing I'd like to mention is that his life is testimony and is a good lesson for the new atheism that we're facing in the world today. One of the, one of the ways that new atheism has become very attractive is by calling people to materialism, by calling people to, uh, you know, sexual freedom, material freedom, and, and saying, look, restrict, you know, you only live run, once, YOLO, and we need to focus on this life rather than the, the next life. However, what we need to understand is there's nothing new under the sun. This philosophy and what it's calling to is nothing really new. There were times in the ancient world where people did become very hedonistic. They did become very materialistic. And then over time, they realized this was basically nonsense and they needed to turn towards God. They needed to turn towards a spiritual awakening and they needed to connect with something greater than themselves which is what Aurangzeb did, which is what the Mughals did, the Mongols did, and which is what is, I believe, something that is going to happen in the West and in, and in the other parts of the world, that people are basically going to realize these material things, they will never make us happy, and we need to turn to something greater than ourselves. Allah says something beautiful in the Quran. Allah says, in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find peace. Now all of the skepticism and the science and the philosophical jargon and technical you know, terminologies that people use to try and you know, cover up this innate spiritual urge that we have, you can't suppress it. It will come to life and people will recognize, hang on a second, I can't find happiness, I can't find contentment, I can't find peace in this world. And of course, we were created not just for this world, we were created for another world. So I hope in this short clip I've shared some of the reasons why I love Aurangzeb, some of the reasons why I believe there's lessons from his life in terms of materialism and new atheism today. And also I hope I've shared why I love him. And I hope that through this video, you can learn some more information about him as well. I highly recommend a lecture which Adnan Rashid gave on Aurangzeb, which I'm going to put in the description. And please let me know your thoughts below.